um, from the audience. Okay, so Kate uh, from the audience asked that, you know, uh, she said, I believe some press would like to exaggerate the fact in order to have some attention from the audiences. So how should journalists balance this percentage between truth and public preference? Do you think that the, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, again, that's, that's a big issue because um, you know, this is a trend that people have noticed a lot over the last 10, 15 years that there are a lot more of clickbaity kind of headlines even from uh, CNN. I've given many examples in class of this where there's a, a I guess you call it a leading headline where it's like, you won't believe what Trump said yesterday. And you go, oh, click, right? The journalists are using this or being pressured to do this from their organizations because their organizations want to, want, their news organizations want to make money and they make money by clicking on stories. And, you know, that's, that's fair enough. That's how it works nowadays. Um, and I'm sure that's perfectly fine for, for sports or for entertainment news or, you know, gardening news or things like that. It's like, oh, you won't imagine the, 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 this great new food that everybody's eating. Okay, that's fine. But like for, you know, news about a pandemic, it's not really that cool. It's not really appropriate to exaggerate. And I think a lot of journalists um, and the editors or the, the, the social media editors have gotten into this kind of a habit of, you know, a lot of the examples I gave of headlines, it's, that's more from their habit of reporting in that way than of reporting in this, like, like Kate says, this kind of exaggerated way. Um, so they really need to, to consider, you know, that doing this exaggerated clickbaity kind of thing is for certain kinds of news, but not for health news and not for pandemic epidemic news. That's very inappropriate to use it in that context. Um, but like I said, I think they just get in the habit of doing it and it's hard to break and you know, they're still want to make money and they still want to get clicks. So it's hard to, to change that kind of a habit. You know, that's what I would say. Yeah. So can we say that in a way covering Trump is also, you know, part of this uh, sensationalism that has been <laughs> included into the economic interest, some of the media institutions, yeah. right? Have been like I said, like maybe that's why they want to cover his press conference live because he'll, he'll say something extreme and then they, wow, now he said something really extreme. Now we have all these stories that we can write about from what Trump said. And especially if he says something very misleading, then the journalist will know, well, it's great. Now I can write three or four stories just on this really insane thing Trump said just now. So, you know, um, and then they've written more stories. They've exposed the lies of a powerful person. And, you know, it's a win-win situation for everybody uh, from their perspective. Right? Um, but again, it's like Kate said, it's, it's a bit too exaggerated in a way. Okay. So, sorry, may I, um, it's a second question from someone who already asked a question. And if you don't mind, can I insert my question at this point? Um, so aside from this economic interest that, you know, as you mentioned that the US media have been, right? In terms of conglomeration, slashing jobs and funding for them. So there's a lack of professional voice, especially in health and then uh, medical, right? medical journalism, etc. cetera. Um, would, what would you say that if someone said, well, yeah, despite all that, if our president said something crazy, it's not just a talk, right? I mean, he's still the president of the most powerful state in the world. And what he thinks, however crazy it is, what he thinks has some real consequences economically, politically, to people who are not just living in this country, but people from across this world. So, you know, aside from all this economic interest, entertainment values, et cetera, don't you think that there's still something there that, um, that keeps the journalists, you know, this ongoing um, excessive differences, coverage of what he said on a daily basis? Don't you think it's still some kind of, there more than that, um, if that makes sense, if it's coming from the president of the United States, then probably we should care about, you know, what he thinks because it has consequences. Yeah, it, but the thing is, it only has consequences if you amplify it and you legitimate what he's saying. 
that's the only way that it has any impact or any consequence on anything. If, if you know, the journalists were, were, were talking about it on, on, on Twitter, for example, what if nobody, what if no journalist came to the press conference or the task force? Or if every journalist came, but they didn't ask Trump a single question. And people were, 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 were touting that as an idea. And I thought that's, that's never going to happen. You're never going to find a journalist and the president in the same room and they're not going to ask him some question. That's just antithetical to, how, to what it is to be a journalist, right? Why would you give up that, that opportunity? That's what you've been taught from, you know, <laughs> from undergraduate to, you know, being socialized on the job and talking with your colleagues. That's the, you know, many journalists would dream about being able to interview the president and ask him a question. So, th so this, this, this ingrained part of, of the ideology of journalism, I believe that makes it very difficult to kind of break away from this, this kind of a habit. Um, and like I said, Trump knows this and he can, he can trap people into doing that in a way. And um, it, it will take a lot of bravery and a lot of strength for, for journalists to say, well, you know, the, the truth is more important. Saving lives is more important than just amplifying uh, what this unreliable source says. And just because somebody is powerful, it doesn't mean everything they say is automatically worth amplifying, right? That's the only reason that powerful people have power is because we automatically ampl amplify all the things that they say. So journalists are, are, part, of, are part of doing that, right? And they have to think a bit more about that and, and recognize that.